If you have some constraint in a network, then using layer to interfaces can be very powerful. But it can become very complex very quickly, so keep it simple. In a moment, I will explain you the concept and some use cases. If this is your first time here, I'm Lars von Consigas. We call ourselves the Palo Alto Networks Experts because the next generation firewall is our passion. It's what we do all day every day, migrating firewalls, providing managed services and most important, implementing security best practices. When I started to work with this box in 2010, barely anyone knew about Palo Alto Networks. But as an engineer, I felt that this solution will change the world of cybersecurity. And yes, today we know it did big time, because it's one of the few security solutions that can truly secure your network. However, there's a caveat. You need to set it up in the right way in order to be effective. Because while it's awesome, it's not a magic box. So over the years we became a professional service partner for Palo Alto Networks, as well as one of a few elite authorized training centers. And with working in the field for so many years and being a trainer, I would like to share my experience with you. So over the next couple of weeks and months, we release new videos and core concepts explaining the fundamental workings of the next generation firewall, starting with the trend landscape, then deployment methods, NAT, AppID, SSL decryption VPNs and many more. So follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube or Twitter to stay up to date. But now let's get started with layer 2 interfaces. Let's have the following case. So we have an internal network and let's say the IP address is 192.168.17.0.24. And in this internal network, we have two devices. There is, let's say, a client here, which has 192.168.17.10 and a server, which is .60. So now, let's have the following use case, okay? So we have kind of this internal network, right? And um, this server, this is now turns out to be, it's a very critical server. Let's say it's a database server. Okay, um, and now the requirement is that you know the traffic, all of the traffic to this database server has to go through the firewall, um, simply because of you know security concerns and uh, problems. Okay, right. So okay, what we can obviously do is we can you know take away this cable here from the internal network, and now connect the server to our firewall. Okay, good. So now, so that's fine. But now, obviously, you know, the server IP address is still 70.6. It's inside of the internal network, right? And let's just say for this use case, we cannot change the server's IP address. So now we need to be able to kind of handle traffic here transparently at layer two. Now, obviously, we could do this with virtual wire. So we're just setting up a virtual wire, right? And with this, we can now handle traffic transparently. But with this, we have kind of two problems. First of all, let's just say there's another server. Okay, so here we have another database server, um, which has is also kind of or was also connected to the internal network and has an IP address on the internal networks. So let's say .61. So and you know so with this obviously virtual wire doesn't help because in the virtual wire we can only have two interfaces. The other limitation of the virtual wire as well would be that you know we also want to you know connect out to the internet and if we use virtual wire again we, we cannot connect. Okay, so with this virtual wire is not really any good for us. So in such a scenario now we need to obviously handle traffic at layer two. Right, and pass it transparently to the firewall. And this is the use case where we want to use uh, our layer two interfaces. Okay, so in this case, what we're going to do is these interfaces connecting to the to the firewall. We define them now to be layer two interfaces. Okay, so one on the inside for our first database server and the other database server as well. Okay, good. So now these are layer two interfaces, but you know. There's still a bit of a vacuum in between. So now we need something in between, which allows us now to kind of to, to switch the traffic transparently at layer two. And this we do with our VLAN instance. Okay, so we create create an, an instance, a VLAN instance. And this VLAN instance, you know, we will now connect to all of the layer two interfaces. And what this will do is, you know, simply switch between them. So you can think of this really like uh, on, a, on, on, on a switch. Okay, so you have a switch on a switch. What do you do? You define a port as an access port, right? And then you're adding this port to a VLAN. 
and you you know that's really the same thing here on our next generation firewall as well okay so and this now enables us to handle the traffic and pass it through at layer two obviously from a security point of view we can now also define zones so let's say the internal network here uh, we're gonna put into uh, let's say the office layer two zone and then these two database servers, let's say we create a dedicated uh, zone from them, which we're going to call uh, Data Center L2. Okay, so again, like before, it's important that, you know, the, the zone matches the type of our interfaces, right? So these zones are going to be basically layer two zones. So and now, uh, as before, we define our security policy, right, where we can now allow or deny traffic in between and can obviously, you know, the traffic is passing through the firewall, so we can fully analyze it, identify applications, uh, block threats, so can can do whatever we, we can do as well. Obviously, with layer two, we do have limitations, right, because, for instance, we cannot do network trust translation when we do layer two. Um, also, we cannot use any services like IPsec VPN tunnels, which do require a layer three interface to terminate the, the, the service service too, okay? Um, but these are kind of, let's say, the main limitations. Um, to overcome some of these limitations, uh, for instance, like NAT and getting connectivity out to the internet, uh, we do have another solution there. So like in this case, you know, so obviously we have no connectivity between the database server or internal network, that's all good, but obviously we still need to provide connectivity out to the internet. So now on the internet, um, we have, let's say here on the outside, our layer 3 interface and you know this layer 3 interface as usual is connected to a virtual router like this so now we kind of need to fill the gap between this kind of layer 3 world and the layer 2 world and this we do with a layer 3 vlan interface So on this layer 3 VLAN interface, because it's a layer 3 interface, we can connect it to a virtual router. And because it's a special VLAN interface, we can also then connect it here um, to this VLAN. Okay, And with this, we now have then connectivity as well outside. So from a zone point of view, we're on the outside. We have again here our normal you know, internet layer 3 zone. And now this VLAN interface is layer 3 VLAN interface because it's, again, a VLAN interface, right, or layer 3 interface. We allocate this to a zone as well. And let's say this is now our office zone. And But this office zone, um, this is now a layer 3 zone. Okay, so now meaning if we're now passing traffic out to the Internet, this traffic passes from the office zone to the Internet. Right, so the traffic would kind of go from here out, layer two, layer three interface, then pass our you know, virtual router and the security policy, and then go out. Okay. Now, what about kind of this internal stuff from here, layer two? To, there, no policies apply. Okay. So that's the file. What the file will simply does this. Right. So again, if traffic passes from layer two to layer two, from one zone to the other. Right, it has to go through this policy and has to be explicitly allowed by the policy. And then if it goes, let's say, from the inside to the outside, you know, this little piece here from this office layer 2 zone to the office zone, just ignore this, right? The firewall will do this automatically, right? So when traffic passes from the internal network out, so this can be from both the servers as well as the internal PCs, what we have, right? The traffic will hit this layer 3 VLAN interface and then basically goes from the office zone out to the internet. Okay, so with this, we have again a very clean separation between, um, you know, the layer 3 internet uh, connectivity as well as kind of our internal connectivity at layer 2. Now, a couple of things to take into account. Um, when we create kind of these layer two connections here, we have to be careful not to create any switching loops. Now, the firewall, it will forward spanning tree PBDUs, but it is not participating in spanning tree, right? So that's something you need to take into account. And then it's important that we kind of make this differentiation between this VLAN instance and our layer three VLAN interface. That's where often a lot of confusion comes in, right? Um, 
between, you know, what's the difference between the two of them. Um, so again, think of the VLAN instance, like your VLAN, what you configure on a switch, right? So again, let's take the analogy of, you know, when you configure a switch, what you do is you have your layer two port, you define it as a switch port, um, you then have your VLAN and you assign these ports to the VLAN, right? And then usually what you do for layer three connectivity, you create an interface VLAN. Right, and this interface VLAN you can compare to this layer three VLAN on our Palo Alto, which is again uh, very similar. Right, so you know this kind of use case is very much the, the, the same here as well. Now, from a use case point of view, when should you use such a design? Now, looking at this, you can see it straight away. This is really complex. Effect, in effect, it is messy. <laughs> okay, so when should you use it? Well, only use it if you really have to. Right. Um, so, you know, having such a feature like layer two on a, on a firewall is very powerful. Right. And you you might have situations where you do need when you kind of circumstances like, you know, not being able to change uh, the IP address of a server and not being able to change straight away the um, all the IP address on the internal subnet. Um, so you can maybe have situations where you have to do something like this. And again, here it's very powerful. You can do so. But, you know, don't base your your, your network design on something like this. Right. Um, so it should always be only a temporary solution. One very good uh, use case, however, is, let's say, a very small office. So imagine you have a small office, and in the small office you place a small Palo Alto Networks firewall, a PA220, for instance, okay, which has, has eight ports. So one port you use to connect out to the Internet, and then you have seven ports left, which you can use for internal connectivity. So let's say you're only three, four people in the office, right? So you can connect them straight into the firewall um, and then just create kind of this layer two switch instance there, right? So that they are all kind of in the same corporate internal network. Um, and with this, you, you basically don't need to deploy an, an additional switch, okay? So for, you know, the deployment of very small uh, offices, I think this is a very good use case uh, where, you, where you could use something like this as well in a very good and legitimate reason. And by the way, if you're interested in security best practices for Palo Alto Networks, then check out the blog on our webpage. Here in the best practice section, you can download this worksheet with over 120 best practices for the next generation firewall. And very soon, we will also launch a security best practice training with a lot of videos explaining all of these security best practices in detail. So if you're interested, then sign up to our mailing list and we will let you know as soon as this free training is available.